Hi everyone, I'm Ian and I'm a proud member of the Canadian Kennel Club. Today we're going to talk about the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. The Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever is a big long name for our smallest of the recognized retrievers. Tollers, for short, have a really cool way of hunting, a very unique way of attracting fowl. Since they look like a fox, what they do is they dance around the river's edge and that movement and their coloring and their tail going up and down and moving all sorts of ways actually, believe it or not, attracts fowl to the water's edge. Then the hunter shoots the birds and dinner is served. So we here in Canada have loved the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever for a very long time and I know that you will too. So if you want an active family pet that can be your partner to go on adventures with all the time, you're going to love the toller. I'm on the couch here with Dallas Hodgins of Red Arrow Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retrievers and her handsome boy Carson. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so Dallas, tell us all about how you got started in dogs. Okay, so it was actually back in 2012 and I was my first year out of high school and I saw an ad online um, for dog posting for a local kennel for a kennel attendant. I loved dogs at the time, I didn't have my own dog, my dad at the time had told me I couldn't get my own dog because he didn't think I would take care of it. So of course I wanted to go and apply at this kennel. The owners of it actually also bred coolers, so that's where I was introduced to the breed. I got to work with the breed on a one-on-one -on -one basis every day, anywhere from newborn puppies up until seniors. So that's where I was introduced to the breed. I got my first Polar Penny in 2012. She was a puppy that the breeders thought they had wanted to keep, but then also wanted to place her in a pet home um, so she could get more one-on-one -on -one attention. I took Penny home. I had the option to buy her. I bought her that second. <laughs> a couple months later, Carson came along. The breeders were looking for a show home for him. So again, put my hand in the air and I said, I will take him. And that's how I got introduced to the whole job show. Wow. And you've been hooked ever since. I have been hooked ever since. So this is going on now 13 years. And counting. You and know? counting. <laughs> Why the toller for you? What is it about the breed that made you say, this is where I want to be, this is the dog I want to be with? So to be honest, the first thing that caught my eye was their appearance. I like their size, they're not overly big, and I thought that their colors and the way they looked was just striking to me. And then of course the more I kind of spent time with them, I fell in love with all of the quirks that tollers kind of have. So with the toller, I fell in love with their eagerness, their activity level. I'm a very active person and my husband is an avid waterfowl hunter. So for us, the breed just worked really well. We have a cottage up north on a lake. The breed, they love to swim. They love to be with you. With their size, they were easy to travel with. But yeah, it was just kind of a match made in heaven. <laughs> now, Dallas, you've shown your dogs in confirmation with some great success. Uh, what are we looking for? How do you spot a toller? Get a dog show and no one's pointing them out for you. How would we spot a toller? So if someone is looking at a dog and they're unsure if it's a toller or not, usually the first thing that you're going to notice is that dark orange to red coat with white markings. They don't always have white markings, but generally speaking, that ideal toller is that dark red with the white markings on the face and tail. A toller is a well-muscled, medium-sized dog. A lot of times people, when they see a toller in real life for the first time, they're a little bit confused because they always say to me, wow, they're a lot smaller in person than I thought from photos. That's because they are, like you said in the beginning, the smallest of the retrievers. The really important things with the retrievers is you don't want their height to exceed 21 inches at the withers. That is keeping them to be the smallest of the retrievers. You want a well-muscled, medium-sized dog, medium to heavy bone, and in appearance, you want them to be slightly longer than tall. We're looking for about a 10 to 9 ratio. In terms of temperament, you want them to be eager, willing to train, and willing to basically if you want to sit around and have a lazy day, they should be able to have that off switch. And if you want to work them in the field all day, they should be on and ready to work. I would say the breed trademark for the toller is their tail. They should have a well-feathered tail carried in a backwards T above the top line um, when they're working and whenever they're at work. That, that to me is the breed trademark. Why do you think people are seeing the toller as such a great family pet lately? I think they're seeing the toller as a family pet lately just because they are such an active breed and I find you know, with 2023, people are looking to be more active. They're looking to be outdoors, looking to spend time with their family. The Toller is really just a dog that wants to be there doing that with you. If you're a family that's, you know, really busy with sports, you're not home a lot, you don't really have a lot of extra time to put into a dog, Toller might not be the great fit for you just because they're probably going to drive you crazy. But if you can give them an outlet to release their energy, take them on hikes, take them training, do family activities with them, you're going to have a really great relationship. 
Now this is a highly intelligent dog, uh, but highly intelligent dogs, like you were saying, can drive you a bit crazy <laughs> if you're not on top of it. How do you train a troller? What methods work best for a troller? Well, it's it's been said that if you don't train a troller, a troller will train you. So yes, you do have to be very on top of them. They're very intelligent, which actually though I find works well in your favor when training them. Exceptionally well food motivated. If they're not food motivated, then they are food motivated one or the other. For myself, I find that shaping training works really well. They're really well at offering behaviors and as soon as they get that praise and they're told they're doing good, they want to offer more of it and get more praise. I do find that they can be a little bit sensitive of a breed out of all of the retrievers. They're not quite, in my opinion, as tough as say, you know, a curly coat or a Chesapeake Bay retriever. But when you are training them, you have to have a little bit more of a gentle hand. I have never had issues training them. They they want to please you and they will they will do whatever they can. Now with all this intelligence, what activities? I feel like I see tollers in everything. I don't think there's any activity I can think you don't see a toller in. It's very versatile. For myself, you know, tollers can compete in any venue. I own tollers. We, we compete in confirmation. We're at hunting in the field. We do obedience. We do rally obedience. We do barn hunts. We do trick training. That, that, for an example, is just what my dogs have done in the last year. Schoolers make very good agility dogs, very good dog driving dogs. Schoolers are used in search and rescue. And actually, we're also seeing a lot of them being used in film and TV production a lot more as well, which I think is, is getting the breed out there a little bit more. Well, they look glamorous, right? So it's no surprise, Dallas, that they're on TV and they're in film now because they're such beautiful dogs. Tell me about that beautiful coat. How much work does it take to keep the dog looking as good as yours do? So they do shed. Um, that is always my first thing that I do tell people looking in the breed because a lot of times that is their first question to me is do, do tollers shed? They shed all year long. Um, usually I find they kind of blow their coat a little bit worse spring and fall. However, if you're not worried about shedding, they with that double coat, they're able to swim in icy cold waters. Um, it actually protects their body. So the breed was designed to hunt in Nova Scotia in the waterfowl season, which is late fall until early winter. So this double coat that they have, although it sheds, it does keep them incredibly warm when they're working in the cold water. As far as grooming goes, they're pretty low maintenance. For myself, I just recommend trimming feet, ears, nails, and that's about it. I actually have a video on YouTube on how to groom a Nova Scotia duck one retriever, and it kind of outlines everything that you need to groom in terms of a pet groom. But yeah, very, very easy, I'd say maintenance, just they do shed. So and how often would, would you bathe in Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever? Is it one of those breeds that you can kind of wait until you really need to? Or you can. Like... So they're kind of like a wash and wear breed. Very low maintenance. I Generally speaking, a lot of my, my groom clients or when I am grooming tollers, they come generally every two to three months. So they don't have to come that often. Generally, they come that often to get trimming done. But as far as their coat staying clean, I do find that once, you know, they shake and dry off, they're good to go. Another good thing about the tollers is they don't get that wet dog smell. So a lot of the retrievers get that. Golden retrievers are kind of prone to that because the toller, their skin and hair is designed to be wet. They don't have that wet dog smell. Alice, who makes a good owner for a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever? A good owner, when I'm looking for owners um, for my puppies, I'm looking for someone who is both active physically, but also somebody who wants to put extra time into their puppy. Polar puppies are busy and they're smart. So I want somebody who basically wants to form a lifelong relationship with their dog. They don't just want a dog to say they have a dog. They want a dog to work with. They want a dog to be their buddy, their lifelong companion. I want somebody who tells me, you know, I want a job for this dog and, and I'm going to be a good home. So I look for somebody who's going to love them, who's going to work them, and who's really going to love all the, the quirks of the who does not make a good owner for a toller? I would say the people who probably are not going to like the breed are people who don't like shed or don't like hair. They don't want a dog to shed. So tollers have a breed trait called the toller scream. So some lines are more notorious for it than others, but generally speaking, if you get a toller, you will hear a scream at some point in its lifetime. Generally speaking, they do it when they're very excited. So when they're playing fetch. It's like a good scream. It's a good scream. Okay. But if you don't know what it is, <laughs> yeah. you're kind of like, <laughs> um, so some people don't like the breed because of that specific trait. Honestly, I don't see it as a big deal. But generally speaking, I would say someone who wouldn't make a good owner, someone who's not active, they don't want a dog who sheds, and they don't want a dog who needs to do something every single day. Pullers do well with a good hike every day, but if you're just going to take them on a 10 minute walk once a day, they'll be mischievous in other ways. They'll find ways. They'll find ways to, to blow off their steam. <laughs> I love it. You're here in Ontario, but of course we have 
pullers across the country. If someone's looking for a great puller breeder, what are some things you want to look for in a Nova Scotia duck pull and retriever breeder? So that's a great question. Um, so my first response to everybody is always check out your national breed website. We have a Puller Club of Canada website. We also have a Puller Club of Ontario website. On those websites, there will be a breeder referral list. Always check out those lists. Breeders who are listed on these lists are held to a higher code of conduct and ethics when making their breeding decisions. Once you look at that referral list, um, look into some of the breeders and go, a lot of them have websites or Facebook pages or Instagram, go check them out. You know, check out their information, um, see what they're doing with their dogs and make sure that they're doing the health testing. Okay, so we with Polars, we're, we actually have a health panel of 11 different genetic tests. Um, that we're able to test our breeding stock for before making breeding decisions. Um, that's great for breeders because we're able to see which dogs carry certain diseases and which dogs are clear. We also test for our hips, elbows, eyes, and cardiac and thyroid. So what you want to do when you're looking for your breeder is ask them if they are testing for these genetic health tests. And you can also ask them for proof of their results. Like, I highly recommend doing that. Um, you can also look them up online in the database. If your breeder is breeding their dogs under the age of Two, to me, that is a big red flag because you cannot test for eyes, cardiac, hips, or elbows until they are. Another thing that I would recommend is that if your breeder is not registered in the company, it's the Canadian Kennel Club or the American Kennel Club. Huge red flag. <laughs> and in my personal opinion, if your breeder is not training and working their dog in at least one sport, preferably multiple sports with polars, that's a red flag to me as well. You know, tollers need to work. We're looking for homes that want to work them. Your breeder should be doing that as well. Those are my top recommendations for looking for a responsible breeder. Once you've picked one that you know you think you're into, go visit them. Meet their dogs, meet them. Um, a lot of times breeders will have a questionnaire for their owners. You know, we want to learn as much about you as possible. I recommend you as a potential buyer. You have a list for your breeder as well. Exactly. I want you to ask me as many questions as I want to ask you. With my puppy owners, I form a lifelong relationship yeah, with it them. It is a relationship. It is. Yeah. You know, I'm trusting them with my puppies, yeah. <laughs> which is a big, it's a big deal. So yeah, so finding good families and families finding good breeders is very important. For now, Dallas Hodgins of Red Arrow Tollers. Tell everyone how they can get in touch with you if they're interested in your dogs. Yep, absolutely. So I have, uh, well, we have a website, it's redarrowcolors.com. Um, for the most part, all of our information is on there about all of our individual dogs, ourselves as breeders, um, basically our whole story, story is up on the website. We also have a Facebook page, an Instagram account, um, and then you can email us as well at redarrowcolors at gmail.com. Um, generally speaking, I am at dog shows um, many weekends, and in the fall we're at a lot of hunt tests as well. Um, so by all means, reach out to me. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dallas, for being here and introducing us to the Nova Scotia Duck Culling Retriever, a truly incredible Canadian breed. Grab me. You're great. <laughs> oh my God.